All right, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Okay, we're gonna take a look at ways to understand fractions on a number line. There's many different ways to understand fractions. Using a number line is actually a pretty good way to do so. Okay, in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to partition jumps on the number line, okay? So, we'll just do like a little, <laughs> doesn't look like a very good start. Partition jumps on the number line. And I keep talking about this word partition, and really what it means is we're gonna break, we're gonna break these uh, parts on the number line, okay? So, I'm gonna get my clipboard now and some paper. Anybody can do this, okay? It just takes practice. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use, right, I'm gonna use, uh, permanent marker just to begin with okay and I'm gonna break these I'm gonna break the fractions into halves first okay start real simply okay now when you go from halves you can go into fourths okay then you can go into eighths sixteenths and so on okay so it's kind of like a uh, you know when you partition uh, these into uh, into parts on a number line it's kind of like the same family okay so that's what I'm gonna call them similar family I call them the halves family actually even though it's not really okay so what I'm gonna do is my double arrow heads like this And the first thing we have to do that's very important is determine the whole number. What is the whole number? Okay. And of course, I'm a third grade teacher, and where I'm teaching at, all right, zero to one is the whole number, okay? And really what they do is they say, the distance from zero to one is one whole, okay? So now what we have to do is partition these. So what I, I do, and at this point I'm just gonna use a pencil. Okay, I wanna try to find the middle area from zero to one, and then just by eyeballing it, I don't have to use a ruler or anything like that, okay? I can move it over just a little bit and that's fine. But what you want to do is you want to make your jumps equal in length or as much as possible. All right. So if you've seen my videos with uh, the number lines, like ways to add, ways to subtract, it doesn't really matter, okay, the distance from one point to the other, okay? But when it comes to fractions on a number line, it definitely does matter. Okay, so I'm going to make a, my first jump like this. And I want to think to myself that that's one out of two jumps. And that's two out of two jumps. Okay. I don't want to be over meticulous, but I don't want to be inaccurate either. Okay. All right, so this is the way I think of this, is that, all right, there's two total jumps, one, two. All right, so I know what my, I know exactly what my, um, what my denominator is gonna be, how many jumps go into the hole, okay? And this is gonna be one out of two jumps. In the classroom, I have my students actually write the denominator first, so they're aware of how many, 
how many parts go into the one or the whole number. Now, this is the second jump out of two jumps, two halves. Okay, at this point, what they start doing is they start seeing um, patterns. Okay, anytime a numerator and denominator are the same number, it always equals one. They also start to understand that a whole number can be expressed as a fraction and a fraction can be expressed as a whole number as well. Okay. So now we did our halves, right? So now I'm going to try to break these into fourths. I don't want to be over meticulous, all right? But I want to be kind of accurate. So now I can come down and I can see that that is where my half, about approximately where half is at, okay? Then I know that half of half is one fourth. Not bad, okay? So now I'm gonna do, now remember that idea of the distance from zero to one is one whole, okay? Never have the kids count the cat, the hash marks, okay, these lines. They'll get, uh, they'll mistake the denominator because they'll think one, two, three, four, five. That's a common mistake for a kid just learning how to use fractions on a number line. Okay? Instead, have them count the jumps. So I have one, two, three, and four. Okay? Now, I have, this is gonna be one out of four jumps. This is going to be two out of four jumps. This is going to be three out of four jumps. And this is going to be four out of four jumps. Four out of four equals one. Okay. Now they can also start to compare fractions to each other. All right. So let me show how to do that. So one half is equivalent to two fourths. Okay. And they can start writing stuff like that. All right. So one half is equivalent or equal to two fourths because they can compare down. All right, what I'll do is shade this in a little bit better. Okay. They can start making statements too, such as one fourth is going to be less than one half. Okay. Three-fourths is going to be greater than one-half. Two-halves is equal to four-fourths. Okay, if you want to use the equivalent symbol, you can. This is the symbol of equivalency. I like to use it, but I see this movement away from this symbol and just putting the equal sign. Okay, it's a little sad for me because I really enjoy that, that equivalent sign and I use it sometimes still. Okay, so now we did halves, we did fourths. Let's compare eighths and sixteenths, okay? Now, I do want to kind of, because for this, the purpose of demonstration, I sort of want to make this line that I'm, I'm using approximately about the same length, okay? It's not necessary though with little kids, especially when they're not comparing, but I want to demonstrate how to also compare fractions to each other on a number line. So, I'm going to try to make this line about as long on, on all of it, okay? So we're gonna look at eighths now. Okay, so. All right. So remember what to do, folks, is that you're gonna start at the half mark, okay? You're gonna break that half mark 
Actually, it might be easier for me to go 0, 1, just like that. Do that right off the bat. Okay. And you can see I'm just a little bit off here, so I'm going to readjust that. Okay. Now we're going to cut these into fourths. And then we're going to cut our fourths into halves. So now we'll have eight equal jumps. Okay, from zero to one. One jump out of eight, one eighth. Two jumps out of eights, eight. Okay, they can do this too. This is another strategy. All right, four eights here. Four jumps out of eight. You can even think of it as parts. Five parts out of eight. Six parts out of eight. Seven parts out of eight. Eight parts out of eight. Okay. One equals eight eights. Eight eights equals one. Okay, now they can continue to practice their, their uh, comparison. Okay, if you have bigger paper, just write it on bigger paper, okay? Now I can compare some, some different things here. They start to see patterns, but it is very important to point it, point it out to them, okay? So I notice that half, two-fourths, and four-eighths are approximately the same distance from zero to one on the number line. Therefore, they are equivalent fractions one half is equivalent to two fourths. Two fourths is equivalent to four eighths. Okay. One fourth is equivalent to two eighths. Three fourths, and you can tell I'm just approximating here, it's not exact, is equivalent to six eighths. Two halves is equivalent to four fourths, is equivalent to eight eighths, which is also equivalent to one. All right, and then have them start making statements, okay, true statements of comparing fractions when they get more advanced and they need to compare. All right, so you can say stuff like this, okay, just following this down one half is equal to two fourths which is equal to four eighths, okay? One fourth is equivalent to two eighths. I still like to use that symbol and introduce it because kids will be seeing that symbol sometimes, right? I want them to know what it means. Three fourths is equal to six eighths, okay? Two halves is equivalent to four fourths, which is also equivalent to eight eighths. Okay, they start to see patterns after a while. All right, the most important thing to do, obviously, is to be able to compare a similar length and distance for your number line in order to do that. Okay, I'm not doing it exact and that's fine because when kids start doing this, it's not going to be exact, but you wanna to try to help them approximate as much as possible, okay? All right, the next thing I wanna do is the 16th, just to take a look at it, okay? So we're going from zero to, to one once again. trying to get that uh, number line, okay? That's my half, half mark, my one-fourth, my three-fourth line, okay? Now you see where I'm going with this, right? Okay, and of course we have zero here, and then we have one down here, the distance from zero to one is one whole. Oops, <laughs> put zero, it's funny. Okay, now we're gonna cut these in halves, aren't we? 
So one half of an eighth is a sixteenth. So there's going to be sixteen total jumps from zero to one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay. So this is one out of sixteen parts. 2 out of 16 parts, 3 out of 16 parts. Another thing that you can do, okay, there's 16 total parts. Have them label the denominator. Either way is fine, as long as they're thinking, okay. I see that there's 16 total parts, 16 total jumps here that I'm using. Okay, that's going to be a fraction, obviously that lower. 4 out of 16 parts, 5, 6 out of 16 parts, 7, 8 out of 16 parts. Looks like when I compare it here it's a half. Okay, You can even have your kids at home you know get a pencil out to compare. Yep, it's a half. It's equivalent. 8 sixteenths is also a half. Start pointing out patterns. Okay, So when you double the numerator and it equals the denominator, it always is going to be half. Okay, four doubled is eight. Eight doubled is sixteenth, is sixteen. So all those are both equivalent to half. Okay. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteenths. Sixteen sixteenths equals one. Okay, good. All right, so. 2 eighths equals 4 sixteenths. 4 eighths equals 8 sixteenths. 6 eighths equals 12 sixteenths. Okay? 8 eighths equals 1, which also equals 6 sixteenths. All right, point out those equivalent fractions to them. All right. I see some more too now that we've done this number line. So now I've look at the eighth. And I see that that is equivalent to 2 sixteenths. Okay. 3 eighths is equal to 6 sixteenths. 5 eighths is equal to 10 sixteenths. Okay. 7 eighths is equal to 14 sixteenths. Okay. And just patterns like that, okay. Um, kids love patterns. And if you can teach them this way, oh, they're, they're, they love it. It takes time though for them to see this. It takes practice, a lot of it actually, okay? And I can compare and prove, all right? Use a ruler if you want to, whatever, okay? Yep, indeed. Yeah, 2 eighths is equivalent to 4 sixteenths, okay? And then have them start drafting statements, true statements, okay? 1 eighth is equal to 2 sixteenths. 3 eighths here is going to be greater than 4 sixteenths. Okay. Save that other paper that you have, you know. Have them take a look. Okay. This is a great way to compare. I like it. Compare your, all right, so, all right, so I see three-fourths over here, okay? Make a true statement comparing them to sixteenths, right? Three-fourths is greater than ten-sixteenths. Okay, something weird like that. Kids love that stuff. And they'll be able to see, yeah, it is, it is greater. So, three-fourths is going to be greater than 10 sixteenths. All right. You guys get the idea. Okay, and just practice it. And on tests, this is a great strategy to use when you have something like this, okay? Because kids will get so confused if they, they don't have something to compare it to. 3 fourths is what to 10 sixteenths? 
Okay, if they have a visual like this, right? If they have some sort of visual, then they can see. All right, well, three forces here on the number line. 10 16th is way over here on the number line. Therefore, 3 fourths is greater than 10 sixteenths. Okay? Good. All right, so that is that is how to, to do that. Okay? Good. It takes a lot of practice, folks. It really does. But the kids will get really good at it after a while. Okay, now there's a different type of family. Okay, the thirds. And then after that, um, you know, fifths, sevenths, nines, those are all kind of oddball ones, uh, breaking them into different different families. Okay, thirds, sixth. Okay. I believe it'll actually break down into ninths as well and twelfths. I don't think I'm going to take it that far. I think I'm just going to go to the ninths with this family. It's like a different one. Okay. And remember what I said before. You have to determine the distance from 0 to 1 or what the whole number is. So determine the whole number. Okay, remember I teach third grade, so the distance from zero to one is going to be the whole. All right, so I wanna keep these lines approximately about the same length. So we can compare the fractions. Okay, so we're gonna go from zero here to one here. Good. Okay, now what we, I want to do is break them into three equal parts. It is trickier, definitely. All right, but it's it's doable. Okay, so maybe here. Maybe here. Okay, I want to start off with pencil first, though. All right, that's actually not too bad for me. Okay, I think I can move it over just a little bit. Notice I'm not using a ruler right now. You can if you want to be really precise. Okay, but we're just, you know, I'm just trying to imagine what it would be like for a kid if they don't have a ruler on a test, right? They want to be able to approximate that better. Use some sort of non-standard unit of measurements. Okay. All right. So, three equal parts, right? One, two, three. Not bad. Okay, done worse. <laughs> One out of three parts. Two out of three parts. Three out of three parts equals one, of course. All right, so let's go into the sixths now. And you guessed it, it's kind of like the halves Going into the fourths, okay? So we're gonna break them into different parts. Follow this down. It's easier to compare. Okay, the distance from zero to one is one whole. Okay, now we're going to half the thirds and we'll get six equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one didn't turn out too well. I'm not too happy with that actually. Okay, it should be over more so we can compare it to two thirds. So I'm gonna do the unusual thing of just going like this moving it over just a little bit because it needs to go over more. That's fine. This is pretty good for 2 6 though. And if you need to readjust, just readjust, no big deal. Okay, so I have six equal parts, right? 1 6th, 2 6th, 
three sixths, four sixths. Can't compare that one. Five six. Six six equals one. Okay. And just do the same thing, right? One third is equivalent to two sixths. Two thirds is equivalent to four sixths. Okay. Three thirds is equivalent to six six, which is also equal to one. Okay. Have them draft true statements too. Okay, write those true statements down like I demonstrated earlier. I need to just that a little bit better. Okay. I want to get this one down right here. Break those into equal thirds. That way I can really compare, right? Okay. Okay, do. Now this is going to be a little bit trickier, okay, because I have three jumps here and I want to put them into three equal parts, okay? So, in other words, I want to do three jumps inside of a third, right? And then you can talk about multiplying fractions at that point, right? Use my pencil. There we go. It's not bad. Okay, and of course what I'm doing right here is just approximating. But it's good for hand-eye coordination. Okay, that looked weird, that one. go not bad okay it's not perfect but so what <laughs> okay we're gonna see here that there's only on the when we break it into nine equal parts that there's not a lot of equivalent fractions but that's good for kids to see okay so this is going to be one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, eight ninths, and nine ninths. Okay? Cool. All right, so once again, compare those equivalent fractions. Okay, one-third is equal to two-sixths, which is equal to three-ninths. Two-thirds is equal to four-sixths, which is equal to six-ninths. Okay. Three-thirds is equal to six-sixths, which is equal to nine-ninths. And then have them draft true state statement, same thing. Okay. They'll start to look at patterns. They'll start to see, okay, they'll start to see, you know what? If I multiply two-thirds by two-halves, I get four-sixths. If I multiply two-thirds by three-thirds, I get six-ninths, things like that. All right, and of course, you know, having them write true statements is a good way for them to really understand this. So one-third is equal to two-sixths, which is equal to three-ninths. Okay, they, then they start getting those equivalent fractions. Have them practice the equivalent symbol. Two thirds is equivalent to four sixths, which is also equivalent to six ninths. Okay. We know all of that equals one. Have them compare different, different, uh, you know, four ninths is going to be less than four sixths. Then you can start having a discussion. Well, you know what? Nine is a bigger number than six. Why is it that four ninths is less than four six? Why is that? They have the same numerator. The kids will tell you, the ones that understand will tell you, it's because 
when you have nine equal parts from zero to one, those are gonna be smaller parts. They'll tell you that, okay? If they, most, most kids when they're learning, they're gonna think four ninths is greater because that denominator is a bigger number. Nine is a greater number than six. But obviously with fractions it's different. It's based off of the, uh, the parts, okay? Now you can also have them, because I have this, you can have them draft statements comparing, you know, like a third compared to like uh, three eighths and stuff like that. Okay, and just have them write different statements. One third is less than three eighths. Okay. One third is less than three eighths. Um, what else? These are different fraction families. I, that's the way I consider them. Okay. Look how close 7 eighths and 5 sixths are. They look almost equivalent. Not quite though. All right. So have that discussion with your kids. Have them, you know, when they do this, first thing you want to do is have them break it up. All right, have them draw a double arrow headed number line about the same distance from the other ones, okay? It has to be about the same in length. Make sure that the jumps are just about equal in length, okay? And you saw that I'm kind of just approximating, but that's okay. All right, only be concerned if one jump is like this, and then the next jump is really long, okay? And they'll do that. You'll have to have them erase a lot in order to get to this point, but they will, I guarantee. Start with a half, halves go into fourths, fourths go into eighths, Eights go into sixteenths. Okay, if you want to, and kids when they start getting more advanced, they just start loving this stuff. Okay, they'll start thinking about, well, what would it be like if it was cut into 30, 32 parts or sixty fourths? Okay, then they start to really think, wow, that that's going to be really small. Okay, remember what I did in order to compare the equivalent fractions, and it helped me be able to do the jumps accurately on the number line, okay? Is that I did a half, I looked down this next double arrowhead, and then I immediately put a line a half, for where the half, the half line is, half mark is, okay? Except I thought of this as two fourths, of course. All right, good. So think about those strategies there, work on that. Okay, the next thing I need to do is Kind of break the mold of just a little bit of how we think about fractions, okay? And it's important because the distance from zero to one does not always equal one, the whole number, okay? So for example, you will see stuff like this. It says, okay, um, and I'll just write this down. The distance, and this confuses little kids. All right, so this is not recommended for, say, um, you know, third graders. It's not even taught to third graders. The distance from zero to two is one whole. Okay, so uh, they think of the whole as different in this this uh, instance. Okay, and it it can definitely confuse kids. So on your number line, it's going to look different. Your number line is going to be like this. And you're going to put zero here. But instead of this being a half mark, okay, you're going to have two at the end right here. And then this half mark, I'm going to do it in pencil so I don't mess it up. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. This is going to be one because, just like this says, the distance from zero to two is one whole. When you get into the upper grades, okay, it's not just zero to one, okay? 
So now let me break those into halves or whatever. So um, let's go like this. Actually, fourths in this case, not even halves, right? Okay. So now I'm going to do jumps like this one, two, three, four. This is where my understanding of fractions really comes in handy, okay? Because there were four equal jumps, okay? Okay, so let me see if I'm doing this correctly now. Um, yes. When I get to four fourths here, I see that that equals one whole. Four fourths equals one whole. Okay, and that's going to really confuse some kids, no doubt about that. So, if the distance from zero to two is one whole, then one is half in that instance. But here is a, a way for you to be able to do this strategy and still recognize that 2 is still the whole number. Okay, so that gets a little bit confusing to those, uh, those younger kids. Okay, and if they're not ready for this, then that's fine. Okay, so... Maybe we could say the distance from zero to four is one whole. The distance. Zero to four is one whole. Try to do a similar line here. The most important thing is that when you're when you're doing this, zero to four, right? Okay. Maybe do like a half or wherever half of the number line is. It's not actually a half mark anymore, is it? You know, and when kids are learning, have them think of it like this. So if the distance from zero to four is one whole, then the number one would be one fourth of that. The number two would be two fourths of it, or half, because half of four equals two. So you can start making those type of connections with the kids. They'll start getting it. This is where the whole number three would be, but Three is three fourths of four. Okay, four equals one. Four fourths equals one. One whole. Okay. In this case. All right. So now it's different when you're doing this type of, of math on a number line, but it's fine. Okay, the kids will understand this, and they'll start to make different type of connections, you know, and it's good for them to, to think of, you know what, yeah, the number one actually is a fourth of four. The number two is actually two-fourths of four. The number three is actually three-fourths of four, okay, if the distance from zero to four is one whole, okay. All right, so those are these are going to be proper fractions, okay? From zero to or zero to one are proper fractions, okay? Now an improper fraction would be a little bit different, okay? So let's take a look at an example of an improper fraction. Improper fraction is more than one. Greater than one. 
Okay, and I'll give you an exa one example on the number line, maybe a couple. <laughs> so, in this case, we're going to go back to that idea that the distance from 0 to 1 is one whole. So now, I'm going to put 0 here in order to practice improper fractions, okay? I'm going to put a different number here. I'm going to put 2 instead, and I'm going to put 1 here, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these into fourths, four um, equal parts, okay? just to begin. And you can see, now that I'm practicing, my approximation with the distances on the number lines getting better, and that's exactly what you want with your kids at home. You want them to do that. Okay, they'll do it. Now, the distance from zero to one is one whole, right? And we have four equal jumps. One, two, three, four. But, in this case, remember, the distance from 0 to 1 is one whole. So, that means that the denominator is going to be 2, okay? And that's going to confuse some people, but that's all right. Okay, you'll get it after a while. Two jumps from 0 to 1 because that's the whole number. So, this is going to be 1 out of 2 jumps. 2 out of 2 jumps equals 1, remember? Now, take a look at the denominator. I mean, the numerator, the number on top. All of a sudden, that number becomes larger than your denominator. Okay? Now, we have 3 halves. And here, for number 2, we have 4 halves. 4 divided by 2 equals 2. That's how you check. Okay. when you get on your number line. Two halves equals one, four halves equals two. If you do it that way, then you're good to go. That's how you, that's why you know that the denominator has to be two if you're doing this correctly. Okay? But now, we see, and I wanna point this out again, Okay, with these improper fractions is that the numerator all of a sudden becomes greater than your denominator. Now we're working with numbers that are past one whole. Okay? All right, let's do one more one more um, one more example of this idea. And we're not even going to compare, okay? But we're going to stick to this same idea. The distance from 0 to 1 is one whole. Okay, in this case, though, we're going to go to the number 4. Okay? We're going to say that's number 2. Here's the whole number, number 3, okay? And here in the middle, or here on this side is, is 1. Okay. Now, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to leave it just like that. And then I know that the distance from 0 to 1 is 1 whole, and it only is 1 jump to get to 1. So, your denominator actually is 1, <laughs> okay? Okay, so this is actually 1, 1, tss, or whatever, <laughs> equals 1. 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 
4 over 1 okay and then hopefully by this by this time your kids have a pretty good understanding of how to divide fractions 1 divided by 1 equals 1 2 divided by 1 equals 2 3 divided by 1 equals 3 4 divided by 1 equals 4 and they're also getting reinforcement that you can express a fraction as a whole number okay and all of these are here right here are going to be improper fractions that are greater than the whole all right so that's a lot to take in all right but remember this is ways to understand fractions on a number line partition or break the jumps on the number line into equal parts very very critical to determine what the whole number is critical what the whole number is okay other things you can do with this strategy is to compare fractions to see if they are equal to or equivalent otherwise known as equivalent to see if they are less than or greater than okay right also, you can um, use number lines to find improper fractions as well, okay? Use to find improper fractions. Okay, don't be afraid to kids and parents out there to have your kids not even use a ruler with it, okay? Just remember to have that line approximately the same length when you're comparing your fractions, and then you're good to go. All right, so that was ways to understand fractions on a number line. I'm Mr. M, and of course, practice, practice, and then just in case you were confused, practice some more. All right, have a nice day and I will see you next time.